Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell. Today I'll be talking with you about the life of Beethoven and in particular his Pastoral Symphony No. 6. When I first presented this pre-concert lecture live in 2017 for the Mid-Atlantic Symphony Orchestra, it was a program of two works that took the composers by surprise because they incorporated things that the composers had said they disliked. So my unifying theme was never say never. One of the most beloved works of Ludwig van Beethoven is his Symphony No. 6, known as the Pastoral Symphony. It was paired on the program with a work by Dvorak, Dvorak's love of nature and homeland and Beethoven's love of nature and hiking made a natural thematic pairing. And Dvorak's high regard for Beethoven is well known. He was said to worship him as a god. Dvorak kept a bust of Beethoven, and in his later years, when he was awarded a laurel wreath with the inscription of, quote, the greatest composer who ever lived, unquote, Dvorak took it home and put the wreath over the bust of Beethoven. Dvorak was born 15 years after Beethoven's death, so he was raised in a world where Beethoven's work was known, revered, and yet some of it was still very experimental and challenging. Some of Beethoven's quartets are still very experimental and challenging listening today. Beethoven's childhood is notoriously one of the worst in classical music. His father was a singer in the chapel and a physically abusive alcoholic who thought he could beat his child into becoming the next Mozart. But for all his faults, his father was Beethoven's first music teacher. His first public concert was at age eight, where his father publicized his age as six. Beethoven's story really is one of talent overcoming poverty and of kind mentors taking him away from the sordid home and giving him encouragement and training. By 16, young Beethoven was assistant to one of his teachers, court organist, violinist in a theater orchestra, played the piano, gave lessons to children of nobility, and had begun composing. Again, these contacts helped lift him up and away to positions in richer households and training with teachers of high international standing like Joseph Haydn. These courts and society where Beethoven worked and trained were extremely superficial places where looks, dress, and social graces were the important features of being someone. Beethoven had none of these, and time and time again, we see that it was benefactors who could see beyond the superficial to his talent that made the difference. One reason Beethoven discarded court finery is because these clothes were made to flatter, slim, elegant carriage. Beethoven was short and squat, built like the working class peasants, and instead of helping him look graceful, the clothing only helped to emphasize that he was not one of the graceful ones. It has been said that he was the physical embodiment of the French Revolution. He was aware of his own work, his own talent, and also of the great debt he owed to the people who often housed and helped him, and he struggled with the conflicts that these competing feelings can arouse. He felt belittled by his household position as a glorified servant, but considered it a matter of course, and even enjoyed dedicating works to show his gratitude and affection. Of Beethoven's titles, musicologist Christopher Gibbs wrote, quote, Most of the familiar titles attached to Beethoven's works were put there by someone other than the composer. Critics, friends, and publishers invented the labels Moonlight, Tempest, and Appassionata for popular piano sonatas. Prominent patrons' names, Archduke Randolph, Count Razumovsky, Count Waldstein, became wedded to compositions they either commissioned or that are dedicated to them, 
thereby winning a sort of immortality for those who supported the composer. Beethoven himself crossed out the heading Bonaparte from the title page of the Third Symphony, but later wrote in Sinfonia Eroica, the heroic symphony, and it is his only symphony, besides the sixth, to bear an authentic composer's title. To be sure, stories about fate knocking at the door in the fifth and the choral finale of the ninth have encouraged programmatic associations for those works, beginning in Beethoven's own time. But in the end, it is the sixth symphony, the Pastoral, that stands most apart from his others, and indeed from nearly all of Beethoven's instrumental and keyboard music, in its intentional, publicly declared, and often quite audible extra-musical content. Beethoven's full title is Pastoral Symphony or Recollections of Country Life. So here we return to our Never Say Never theme. In Beethoven's day, symphonies were not supposed to depict bad weather or postcard scenes. He himself spoke against programmatic and pictorial symphonies. He spoke dismissively of works filled with bird calls to depict country scenes, and yet here he chooses to ignore his own words and does the same thing himself. It is worth noting that Baroque-era music is filled with keyboard pieces that imitate cuckoos and hens and nightingales. This is the music that he would have learned and played during his early training. So this may have been part of his distaste for these works, works that were composed for the harpsichord. They were definitely part of a musical language of the past. And during his own lifetime, songs and pieces about birds, flowers, and trees were part of the repertoire considered appropriate for his students, elegant young ladies. Consequently, these themes were considered somewhat sticky sweet and the stuff of easy popular pieces for the homey gathering, but not for the concert hall. One thing we know about Beethoven was that he was very self-absorbed, all about feelings, his own feelings, that is. He was notoriously oblivious to the feelings of others. As he aged, this was attributed to his deafness, but the reality is that he exhibited this same impulsive rudeness in his youth. It is commented on time and time again in contemporary letters. His emotions of the moment often overruled even his own intentions. In a fit of anger over an imagined slight, he would write a scathing letter to his best friend and write him off entirely. Weeks later, he would write mushy, sentimental letters of apology and abject devotion. He was a creature of his emotions of the moment. It's a very good thing he did not have his own Twitter account. As previously mentioned, he notoriously renamed his Napoleon Symphony the Heroic Symphony because of his anger at Napoleon crowning himself emperor. But even before that, he had lost patience with Napoleon because the presence of the troops prevented Beethoven from taking his extended daily walks in the mountains, which he considered a great personal inconvenience. Forget that people are dying. I can't take my walk. Even after his deafness became profound, he liked nothing more than a walk in the woods, where he would wander undisturbed, stopping from time to time to scribble a new idea on the folded sheets of music paper he always carried in his pocket. Two years after the premiere of the Pastoral Symphony, he wrote to Therese Malfatti, quote, No one can love the country as much as I do, for surely woods, trees, and rocks produce the echo which man desires to hear, unquote. This symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, is one of a pair composed during a particularly stable part of Beethoven's life, while he was living under the roof of his benefactor, Count Razumovsky. His C minor symphony, number five, is described as dramatic, mysterious, melancholic, and foreboding. We may suppose that at the beginning of this tenure, he was exercising his demons, and once they were worked through, 
he could relax a bit into this peaceful existence of comfort and create this symphony that is the musical equivalent of a lovely vacation. The opening line of his rare written description of this music directly addresses his conflict with the more literal aspects of the music. The music is not supposed to be a picture of life in the country, but is supposed to express the feelings of being in the country. It is said by some contemporaries that the bird calls that are now notorious were written as a joke. That could be very true. When an artist creates, they spend time living in and refining the particular mental state of that work and the feelings surrounding it. We have to infer that this would have been a particularly happy time to have these happy themes constantly running through his head. By committing to the pleasant imagery of this symphony, he may have said to himself, well, why not just go completely over the top? And given that he had previously said he hated this type of thing, we can see him laughing at himself as he adds the bird calls in the flutes and the woodwinds. Passionate letter writing aside, Beethoven also did not much believe in explaining music in words. So here again, he broke from his own habits. He chose to write program descriptions of the work. And these were not only printed in the score, but actually were circulated in public before the symphony was presented. Notice that he refers to the movements as separate pieces. Pastoral symphony, more an expression of feeling than painting. First piece, pleasant feelings which awaken in men on arriving in the countryside. Second piece, seen by the brook. Third piece, merry gathering of country people interrupted by fourth piece, thunder and storm into which breaks fifth piece, salutary feelings combined with thanks to the deity. And thanks to you for your time and interest. I'm Cara Dahl Russell. Here at the top of the video, the little eye and a circle, you can click on that to hear one version of this work. But in the text below the video, I will include links to other performances as well. So you can listen and compare and contrast how different groups and different conductors interpret this well-known work of Beethoven. Enjoy.